Excellent. Welcome to the Vettus Point Demo Meeting. Uh, summertime heat turning up. We got folks hanging out in the cool aisle of the data center, or maybe in the hot aisle in an effort to acclimate for Hacker Summer Camp coming up. Who knows? <laughs> and let's talk about framework. New modules. Uh, we've got three new modules to highlight. Contributor Tim Wright spearheaded a collaborative effort to create a new module targeting 64-bit iOS devices running iOS versions 10 through 11.2 inclusive. This module exploits a type confusion vulnerability in the JavaScript proxy object in WebKit and can get you remote code execution on the target device. Very cool. Community contributor Boyd added a module targeting a lack of proper authentication checks in vulnerable versions of IBM's WebSphere application server network deployment software. This module allows a framework user to write a payload to the target as the system user and then execute it. Very cool. And our own space, also known as Shelby Pace, created a new module targeting Libra NMS, a PHP slash MySQL based network monitoring system. And from what I understand, every release through version 1.46 inclusive contains a command injection vulnerability, which this module exploits via an unsanitized post parameter thus allowing framework users to run commands on vulnerable targets. At least that's what I read earlier. Yeah, then I actually tried it out and it worked. So, anyway, <laughs> so, so awesome work, Shelby, thank you. And uh, I think we'll have a demo of this, looking at Jacob. Yes. He's looking at me, all right, all right, cool, awesome. <clears throat> and some cool non-module stuff going on as well. Uh, let's see, contributor Tim Wright uh, added the ability to send mouse and keyboard input events to Windows and Mac OS interpreter targets. And if you want to see a demo of this, Brent actually showed it in last week's Mouse Plate demo meeting recording, which you can find on YouTube. Tim Wright also carried forth some initial work by Jacket Blank, and now we have a new screen share command for compatible interpreters that will display the target screen in real time. And I'll actually demo this as well. Community contributor Suzu991154 added Windows 10 target support for the Adobe Flash opaque background use after free exploit module, which is CVE 2015, 5122 for those playing along at home. Contributor Hoodie provided a fix for John the Ripper hash IDing under Mac OS, it's awesome. Community contributor Big Indian Smalls added support for extended passive mode, also known as ESPV, to the framework FTP client, which should work better with targets in added environments. I like that stuff. Mm -hmm. Our own WVU provided the ability for framework SSH client libraries to simulate the identification string presented by other SSH clients. And, and see, our own ACAMIC added support for module aliasing and framework, allowing modules to have alternate names. And one more from Rapid7, uh, uh, Jay Martin updated our, uh, as uh, maybe previously mentioned, Retina XML and Porter code to accept newer file formats. So. Moving, moving, moving. We've got the list actually continues on a little bit this week. Our own vCook added improvements to provide clear errors during payload generation. vCook also made a sweep through the tree, swapping out expanded expand path for Gideon V to give framework users a more consistent experience across different session types. Community contributor Noodle of Death added some word lists for enumerating WordPress plugin and theme directories. And last but not least, our own WVU added Unix command shell support for the Play YouTube post module, as well as a default video. I'll give you a hint, it's epic. Right. <laughs> That's your hint. If you're at the hackathon, you probably know what that means. And if you're not, you might be able to guess. Uh, bug fixes, we have some bug fixes. Contributor Tim Wright, again, he made, he made each list this time. Hooked us up with a race condition fix that should remedy some errant hangs or crashes folks may have encountered using Java or Android payloads. Community contributor SSYY201506 added a fix to ensure that IPv6 addresses are correctly parsed when using reverse HTTP and reverse HTTPS payloads. And our own Jay Robles provided a fix for ensuring DB imports into Metasploit 5 web service work as expected. And a bit of bonus content this week. We've published wrap-ups and takeaways provided by many of the participants on the recent Metasploit hackathon on the Rapid7 blog site. It's a short and fun read, definitely worth checking out. Another fun read we have is a recent blog post by Center, providing a detailed walkthrough to examining and understanding a heap overflow under Windows 10 with the goal of exploiting it. Definitely worth checking out as well. And for details on recent framework activity, check out the weekly Metasploit wrap-up blog post at blog.rapid7.com. And as always, a huge thanks to all who helped make Metasploit better through their contributions. Thank you. 
Time for demos. Send some demos. So that is a Libre NMS VM running. Um, I already have all the options set for the exploit. This one is post authentication. And once the options show up, yeah. OK, so for the OVA that Libre NMS provides, uh, there's the default username and password. Um, so those are there. That's not my password, at least not that you know. Uh, I also made some modifications so when the exploit runs, we could kind of see what's going on. Just the request. Um, this is a command injection, so we'll be able to see it going across the, the wire. Um, once this finishes, so who am I? And just you name, kind of prove we got some interaction there. Uh, but as far as what's actually happening, um, post authentication, so we do have to log in, perform a check, make sure we're logged in. Uh, the module does store credentials because Shelby's cool like that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Save that uh, yeah, so uh, what, what happens is for this one, um, during the add host, there is a parameter, uh, the community parameter here, um, where your command actually gets stored. Uh, it doesn't get executed until later, though, um, which is this next request, the AJAX output one. Uh, and you have to have the format set to text for it actually to execute. If not, it runs or it stores to a file some commands. Um, SNMP walk is the type. That's the specific one you have to go to to get command execution as well. Uh, once you kind of hit those paths with having the device there um, and then making the request with the correct parameters, You'll go through and get a shell. Uh, if I don't know where it went, <laughs> yeah. So you'll you'll get your shell, and then there's also some cleanup to make sure the the host is actually removed that was used for the specific module. Um, but yeah, you, you'll get your shell after that. And I already ran the command, so yeah, it does work. It's legit. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah. Thanks, to Shelby, for the analysis as well. Um, Next, yeah, right. any cool. questions, right? There you go. Any questions? <laughs> Anybody got any questions for Jacob or Shelby? We had Shelby here for. But yeah, and it, it will work again, so it's. Well, look at that. Yeah. Uh, even better. Even better. Yeah, that was my third time running it, not the second time. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure my demo works. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to demo the new interpreter screen share functionality. So what we've got here, uh, upper left, is a Windows 10 VM. Nothing too crazy. I've already kind of set everything, got everything set up just so I can show the functionality where my, a, a payload that I generated with MSF Venom already present on the system over here. I've got my Metasploit console running over here. I'm going to set up the multi-handler, the IP address for localhost, set the payload, and run. So it's, it's running, I'm gonna come over to my target. I'm gonna start this puppy up, maybe. Oh, wow, huh, well, there it goes, it's just slow. It's slow, sorry, okay, yes, go ahead and run this as admin. All right, so we come back over here, we should have our interpreter session, we run help. This particular functionality uh, for screen share should be available on all the interpreters that support screenshot, so screenshot, is you can imagine literally takes a picture of the screen if you've used it um, and you know that just saves it to a file. Screen share uh, will actually does the same thing, just up, perpetually updates this HTML file while it's running. So I've got this running at the moment. I'm going to come over to my browser and find that file. So let's open that file. Open file. And it is, I think it said it was this one here. So if everything works, I come back to my Windows 10 instance and I click into other, let's pull up my Defender. Uh, so I did see down here that it's, it's reflecting that we're moving around. We'll launch like Microsoft Edge for whatever reason. Uh, and, it, and they will close it as we appropriately should when we accidentally launch Microsoft Edge. Just kidding. Uh, sort of not kidding. Kidding, not kidding. Uh, but yeah, so that's it in a nutshell. Pretty straightforward um, functionality. Uh, like I said, should work with any interpreter that currently supports screenshot. And the command is called screen share right there. 
All right. So, uh, when of year or so, or two, it's hard to keep track. The prompt of Metasploit. So, you use a module like um, and uh, the login. Um, it used to just show uh, the uh, SMB login portion of this. Um, and so you needed that to know which login scanner you were in. So you weren't using your SMTP login scanner or your RDP login scanner or whatever else accidentally. Um, but now that we show the whole thing, um, there's a lot of repetition. For SMB, it's not too much. Uh, but moving modules in Metasploit has historically been painful because we have to go through a deprecation process and then there's a period of time where we've got a copy of each module and then we eventually remove the old one and people were still using it and they, it, it's not pretty. Um, so, um, I added a little bit of extra metadata so that you can now do something like auxiliary scanner SMB login and get the thing. And it's still the same module. It's the literal same module file. Uh, you can see down here that we're editing SMB slash SMB login uh, inside of the edit command. Um, and we'll see that we've got this new constant up here that specifies the aliases. They are constant. They're not expected to change. Uh, please don't define them programmatically. Uh, but they're stored in the metadata and they're used uh, just as alternate names for the uh, module. Um, and we can see if we go into IRB though, the module knows which name it was uh, invoked with. Uh, so potentially it could in the future support uh, multiplexing uh, modules together. Like if we wanted to do an integration with uh, one of the other exploit frameworks that specifies uh, that are very specialized like a uh, router exploit or WordPress exploit or one of those, uh, we could do that without having to write a full-blown plugin, uh, which when you write plugins that load modules, that gets a little uh, hairy. So this would be another way to potentially go about it. There would be a little bit more work that would need to be done specifically keeping options straight and descriptions and whatnot uh, per alias, but uh, it would use a similar sort of framework. Right on. Excellent.